There was a great crowd that had come to the festival. And when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus, he went and found a young donkey and he sat on it, just as it's written. He said, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colts. We didn't understand these things, not at first. Palm Sunday. Our worship today is reminding ourselves how God has come to serve and how we can serve God in turn. Traditionally, we begin our service with palms and we cry, Hosanna, God help us. As we begin our worship today, I invite you to consider the ways that God helps you through your everyday life. I had no idea what was going on. There were people everywhere cheering and yelling that the king is here, but I didn't see a king. I saw a man riding on a colt that was barely big enough to carry him. I saw people putting their coats on the ground in front of him and so that the colt was not walking in the dirt. I was pretty sure they had all gone crazy. But then as he passed me, he looked at me and smiled at me, me, a child that people looked down on, just a dirty child who was not worth the palm branch I was waving. He looked at me and I knew he saw me as one of his own. I could feel it. Yes, he is a king. The king has come. We continue in worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things, and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Beloved, here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. A reading from Philippians, the second chapter, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that in the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised, we will trust your word. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of the ones at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that, they, that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The story from John focuses on service, an aspect of Christian discipleship. Only we like to think of service as something that we do when times are great. <laughs> we volunteer or serve others from the bounty of our hearts. We serve when times are good, when bank accounts are plush, when our free time is plentiful. Just this past week, I was reading about a situation that many people are beginning to face. They're retiring from high demand jobs and they find themselves bored. The article advised, go serve a nonprofit, as if a nonprofit is a backup plan, as if a nonprofit isn't worth the attention that a for profit might deserve. I'm not saying that nonprofits don't have a need, they do, but how often do we think of serving others as something optional, as something that we do in our spare time, a cherry on top? Our story from John's Gospel today depicts something drastically different service done in the face of death, service done with devotion. This scene dances with images from previous gospel stories and other scriptures, just like it wavers between life and death. We're at the house of Lazarus, a man whom Jesus raised from the dead. And that happened in John's account in chapter 11. But in case the audience forgot, not only does John mention it, but oh look, we've got his two sisters there, Mary and Martha. Think of the stories associated with these two sisters. In Luke's Gospel, Martha is serving the disciples while Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. 
the audacity of her not fulfilling her societal duties. Remember that story? And when Martha goes and tattles on her sister, Jesus says, oh, Martha, Mary has chosen that which cannot be taken away. Then back in John, in the story of Lazarus' death, Jesus meets both these sisters individually in their grief. Martha, he meets outside of town. Mary is later brought out to him. Jesus comforts them both differently, using the same words. For Martha, he reminds her that he himself is the resurrection. And Martha confesses him to be the Christ, the Messiah, the long-awaited one. With Mary, when she joins him where he's at, he asks instead where Lazarus is laid. And we get the shortest verse in the whole Bible. Jesus wept. Intellectual comfort with Martha, emotional comfort with Mary. In the way that Christ met the sisters, so each of them meet him here in this meal. Chronologically, it happens just before the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It's the final event outside the holy city, the place where Jesus enters a fulfillment of a prophecy. And in this meal, Martha again serves and Mary is again at his feet. Only there's a lot wrong here. Lazarus is there. Lazarus, the guy who was dead and is now living, thanks to Jesus. The disciples are there. The men are eating together, as was common. But when Mary enters, she says nothing. She enters with insanely expensive and fragrant lotion, and she anoints his feet. There's lots wrong with that. For starters, one would be anointed at the start of something big, a new undertaking. In the Old Testament, the leaders of Israel were anointed, the leaders of the people. They would be marked with oil as a physical sign of God at work. Still today, we mark those who are newly baptized. We anoint them with oil, the sign of the cross, as they start on their baptismal journeys in faith. Anointing was done at the start of something. Only Jesus isn't starting something. We know that he's entering Jerusalem as a final time. He's going to his death. That's the first thing that's off. The second is that one would be anointed on the head, the very visual place of honor, the visage, the thing that made the person unique, right? But Mary, Mary anoints Jesus' feet, his dirty, gross feet. And especially in Jesus' culture, feet were something to be hidden. They were dirty in reality and in thought because, remember, people walked everywhere. They were dirty in thought because they're just seen as a part of the body that we don't want to really expose and talk about much. Mary, though, anoints Jesus' feet before he journeys into Jerusalem for that final time. And then the last thing that's off, the one who's doing the anointing. See, in the scriptures and in the Old Testament, it'd be a person of authority, a person in power who would anoint the other. The priest would anoint the king or the leader of the people. The servant never anoints the master. Here, though, it's Mary, a lowly woman, a woman who boldly sat at Jesus' feet in the place of a disciple, a student lower than her master. That's not right, right? It's that awkwardness, all this wrong that Judas calls out, hey, not only should you, Mary, not be doing the anointing, you shouldn't anoint the feet, and for goodness sake, you shouldn't be anointing something because it's not the start of something new. Judas, whose brand will become infamous with betrayal, he says, hey, she shouldn't do that. But he doesn't say it's because of all the social standing or the cultural precedent. He's been with Jesus long enough to know that those distinctions don't matter. Judas's main hang-up is that perfume costs a lot. And you know that money, that money could be given to the poor. The poor. It's a convenient group, right? They're unnamed, they're faceless. Who is poor? It's the other. It's not your cousin John. He's just down on his luck. The poor, those are people you don't know. Certainly not by name. You certainly don't know their life stories. The poor are the people you serve when you have extra time, extra money, excess. At the start of our service today, we cried Hosanna, which means God help, as we entered with palm branches. Hosanna is both a cry of physical and spiritual needs. God, help us out of our physical situations. God, help us to see you, to see you in the face of one another. Mary's extravagant action is one of service, intense devotion. But there's one more thing that's wrong with what we read today. It's the disciples' silence. 
When Judas critiques Mary's action, Jesus says, I'll leave her alone. She saved it for the day of my burial. You'll always have this faceless poor with you. None of the others in that room, not Martha, not Lazarus, not Peter, who sticks his foot in his mouth at every other chance he gets, pushes back that this is the day of Jesus' burial. Because it's not, not really. We know that we have five more days until we get to the cross on Calvary. We have another meal scene to get through, plus the walk with the cross up the hill and the hours spent hanging there before Jesus actually dies. And spoiler, there's another anointing by women who are going to realize that the resurrection has actually happened. But in this moment, on this day, the disciples don't push back. Why? I venture it's because they're called out. Jesus ends with, the poor you will always have with you, these nameless, impersonable others, this group that you claim to represent without knowing a single person's name, let alone their actual story, these others you're always going to have with you in times of excess, in times of shortfall. In that moment, the disciples realize how far they have fallen short. Not only have they failed to honor their friend and teacher like Mary did, They've failed to befriend, to know, to work with others. Our midweek Lenten services have been focused on the lives of various saints. It's been fun. I think it's been a good series. But because all the saints, Thomas Merton, Mary Magdalene, St. Nick, John of the Cross, Dorothy Day, all these ancestors of our Christian faith are notable because in their devotion to Jesus, they served. They served others. They served the poor, these faceless others, the destitute, the uneducated, the sick, the ostracized, people who were lifted up as examples. These saints served others through their love and devotion to God, not just in doing good things, but in befriending and uniting one another in God. They actually did what Jesus said to do. So simple and yet so very bold. None of the saints did it perfectly, and I hope that was clearly expressed in all their lives and stories. Each messed up. But still, like the crowd that cried out that day as Jesus entered Jerusalem, like we cried out together, Hosanna, God help, they said. God help me to overcome my circumstances. God help me to see you. God help me to serve. There in the room that day with Mary anointing Jesus' feet as the scent permeates everywhere, hangs in the air between the present reality and the potential reality, Jesus, their friend and their teacher, Jesus, the Messiah. Like her sister Martha professed, Mary sees that potential reality that this man is the Messiah and she serves him extravagantly. When we serve God, when we commit to God's ways, there's always going to be detractors. Always will there be negativity. You could have spent that money on this. That group doesn't really need it. They're just entitled or lazy. The voice of a betrayer can be so loud. But the actions of the devoted, silent though they may be, that's what truly speaks. May our actions, our deeds, our extravagant devotion to God come from the overwhelming abundance of Christ's love for each of us. Amen.
us as we pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for bringing us here today in worship. Help us to move from an intellectual faith to a physical faith. Help us to do what you have called us to do, to boldly believe what you have said. Grant us purity of heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are our neighbor. Help us to see you in the face of one another and help us to serve you through the work we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our great teacher, we pray for our students and staff of our kindergarten and preschool. Grant them patience and wisdom. Help them to see your face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our great healer, we pray for all who have need in mind, in body, or in spirit. Surround each with your love guide them with your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting that you hear us and knowing that you care, we lay our prayers before your throne of grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share a sign of God's peace. Thank you for being part of Holy Love Lutheran Church and worshiping with us today. We invite you to continue to support our ministries and to keep us vital as we seek to live out God's love in the world. You can go to our website or click the QR code with your smartphone. We also invite you to give of your time and your talents. Consider being part of our online worship service for a reader or a singer. We invite you to be part of our community in person as well. However you are able to give, we thank you. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church here on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven earth are full. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. 
In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant, Jesus, to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved of God, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. This is the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. All are welcome at Christ's table. Amen. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all Please receive the benediction. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, and renewed. May God bless you and keep you, show you mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace through Christ our Lord. Amen.